Hi, welcome to another one in Logic Monitor's World's Shortest Webinar Series. Uh, this one we're just trying to do a really quick overview of how Logic Monitor can save you time compared to open source systems such as Snagios. My name is Steve Francis, I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Logic Monitor. So let's get started. We are a hosted service, we run software as a service so all the data is stored and processed on our servers, which always brings up a question, how does that affect your security? Do you have to open up your firewall so that we can collect your data? Uh, the answer is no. The architecture is that you install a small Java application on either a Windows or a Linux server that you already have inside your perimeter. That system makes one outgoing SSL connection, has no listening sockets, everything's encrypted, so it makes an outgoing connection to our server clusters where it basically gets its configurations and says, what do I do? Once it's been told, go monitor these series of devices, it'll do that data collection using the appropriate data collection mechanisms for whatever the device is. So if you're talking to a router, it would probably be SNMP and NTP. If you're talking to a storage array, we will probably use the native API of that NetApp storage array or whatever it is, or SNMP as appropriate. If you're talking to a database server uh, that's running on Windows, we'll probably talk WMI to monitor the Windows part of the operating system and JDBC make native database polls to monitor the MySQL or SQL Server or Oracle or Postgres or whatever happens to be running on that system. Basically all the data collection gets done on this device. Once it collects the data, it then posts that to back, again encrypting it first and sending it over SSL to our server. So assuming your existing firewalls allow an outgoing SSL connection, then there's no change required to your security posture at all. Alright, so let's jump into the demo really quick. So this is the basic view of the Logic Monitor host screen. You'll notice there's tabs up here where you can get to different views on the product. Hosts and dashboards is where people most commonly spend most of their time or in the alert screen. We're going to now demonstrate how easy it is to add in a new host. So if you are adding in a new host from scratch in a system such as Nagios, you'd have to figure out what on that host needs to be monitored. That's quite different than in Logic Monitor. So in Logic Monitor you put in the IP address or DNS name, you put in the way you want it to be displayed. Uh, you can put in a description that will just provide information, it's a boot server. You can put it in uh, manual groups, but I'm not going to do that just to show off another feature. Properties are things, if this particular host does not use the same SNMP community as your other systems, or it has different database credentials, this is where you would define those. In this case, it uses the same one, so I, it can inherit it from the group or from the parent, so I don't have to do anything. Alright, so I've added that host, I refresh this group, it showed up here in this Linux group. You notice I didn't add it to the Linux group. This Linux group is a intelligent group. It will show up any system that has Linux in it. So this is the system I just added. There's been no configuration and it's figured out, okay, this is a Linux box. Logic Monitor figured out all the physical disks on it, all the mounted file systems. Uh, it figured out it's running Apache. It's figured out how many interfaces it has. It's running Postfix, so it's monitoring the mail service and processes. Compare that to Nagios where you would have had to know what the system was running first, then go in and edit the host's configuration file, the service checks file, the host groups file, and if your system changed, you have to repeat that process over and over again. The difference is with Logic Monitor, we assume you want to monitor everything. We check whether the system is running a database. We check whether it's running Nginx or different web servers, not just Apache. We check whether it's running Java applications, whether it's going to be running Tomcat. As an example, a system that's been collecting data for a bit longer, one of our servers that's running the logic monitor process. So it is running, you can, you can see it has detected this one's running Tomcat and you can get a breakdown of uh, how many requests are coming in on each individual port, the average processing time for, for each Tomcat request. This one's running an SSL certificate so it tells you how long that certificate expires. This one's running MySQL, it, it also detected these specific engines in use so you get data based on InnoDB or if you're running the Percona MySQL extensions. We check all this stuff automatically so you don't have to go in and configure anything. It's all just there. So really the only setup involved is setting up your SNMP credentials and database credentials and so forth so that the agent which is running in your system anyway has permission to connect to these systems and collect the data. It's very easy, you just set those properties on a global level. So you can set your VMware ESX passwords, your JMX passwords, SNMP community strings, database passwords and so forth. You set them at a global level. You can override them on a group level, you can override them on a host level. With Logic Monitor we assume you want to monitor everything and then if there are things that you don't want to monitor, so uh, let's look at this one which is in an acknowledged alert, this network switch. So this happens to be a Cisco switch. So we discover that it is a Cisco CPU, all its 
individual memory pools. There's alerts predefined for all these. You don't have to know what to monitor. We've done the research and know what to monitor for you. So there's best practices thresholds set out of the box or off the web, as it were, seeing it's a SaaS service. Um, it's responding on the HTTPS port, but if we look at this error, it's returning a value of five. So it's, um, it has responded. Currently, it's not responding. We don't really care about uh, that on this particular switch, so we can turn off that alert. We can manage this alert. Uh, we can either turn off monitoring on it altogether or just turn off the alerting. In this case, I'll just turn it off because we don't care. Uh, here, in some other things that are in alert, our virtual center server. So this volume usage, you can see the percent used is 97% on its C drive. So obviously that triggered a, a threshold. In this particular case, I don't want to turn that off, but I'm just going to adjust that threshold. So rather than warning me at the default threshold of 91, I say, warn me if it's greater than 98, and send me an error if it's greater than 99. So I save that, and that'll clear up that alert. So if we look, we've, we'll have started collecting data on this system, no configuration, so uh, we probably won't see much yet because we just started. By default, most graphs show a day view. You can, of course, change the time frame on any, of any graph. So if we zoom into the most recent hour, OK, so there is some data there. We've started collecting it. Actually, another thing I'll show really quick is while you're looking at a system, we have automatically generated overview graphs, which can aggregate data from, you know, in this case, all the physical drives. You can do the same thing, show all the interfaces on one graph, all the Tomcat requests for the different ports on one graph, and so forth. Because there can be a lot of things on a graph, you can deselect things. So if you wanted to turn off SDA0 or DM0 so that you get a clear review of the other things, the graph resizes and redraws itself. You can change the time frame, uh, zoom, it, zoom back to a year, zoom into an hour, or go into an arbitrary time frame by dragging slider boxes. And for troubleshooting, you're only interested in one hour from you know, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock yesterday. And you don't, you don't want to have to go in and click on each individual one to graph and investigate what was going on and change the time frames. You can actually set the default time range that uh, you want to look at. So instead of looking at normal 24 hours, you can go in and say, I want to see the most recent two hours for everything. And then every graph will redraw on that time frame. So um, we have integrated graphing and loading and trending. Compare that to Nagios, where it's by default it's a alerting system only. With us, we figure out what you need to monitor. We graph it as well, so you can do time analysis, and we can customize the alert escalations based on what the alert is, who you want it to go to, based on group, based on host name, based on type of alert. Different groups can have different alert escalation periods where it goes to one person's email. If they don't respond, go to their pager. If they don't respond, go to the three people's pages. This is a quick look at a simple dashboard. Any graph can be added to a dashboard. You can make up graphs. Uh, this one's showing total bandwidth. The reason it starts here is because I just added these two switches to the system about an hour ago for the to get ready for this demonstration. So this is taking the data from two separate switches, adding them together, and showing them on one system. This is a smart graph, so it's basically saying, show me all the Apache requests served on any host that's running Apache in my system. If you bring up a new server, like this new util server we just added, it automatically gets added to this dashboard graph. You don't have to do anything. Now, one of the things about Logic Monitor is it saves you a lot of time and make sure your monitoring is comprehensive. You change something, Logic Monitor will pick it up. If you add a new interface, if you bring up Apache, if you spawn a new Tomcat instance or a new SQL Server instance on your Windows server, Logic Monitor will detect that, start monitoring it automatically. You can turn off the monitoring, but we default to monitoring on. Here are some key takeaways. Uh, it really is that quick and easy. You install an agent, configure credentials, add a host, you're done. You don't have to go in and edit hosts, edit service checks. Everything will just work out automatically. It's not just for systems. We only looked at systems here, but the same monitoring for routers, for storage engines, for NetApps, for database applications, for other applications, uh, whether they're Java-based or .NET-based, power management, server hardware management, and the server starts as low as $300 a month. That's where you can go for further information. Thank you very much.